Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a quick look. So this is a preview of the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. Now the pattern on the box, just wonky the uh, tripod so I can give you a look. But it makes me think of the uh, Big Brother eye with this on it. That's actually textured as well. Anyway, so inside the box, I have been busy of late with uh, other reviews. So if you want to go and see the 5600 review, at 4.8 gigahertz, it's live on the channel right now, and I've also done the 5900X and the 5950X. But inside the box, coaster, driver CD with a little sticker, uh, your normal manual, and then a load of stickers like we are used to. Beyond that point, the accessories are a bit scarce. Wi-Fi antenna, you get four normal SATA cables, the normal rubber plasticky ones, not braided. You get a normal four pin RGB extension and an addressable three pin extension. And then it's literally your M.2 screws and the little uh, connector for putting the front panel headers uh, from your case onto the board and making that a little bit easier. So the board itself. Now I do have a magic cable, so I'm going to show you it lit up in a bit as well. And the reason why I've not got a CPU or anything in it is I am going to review it in full with a 5000 series processor so i need to get a few bits and bobs out the way in the meantime but a glance around it a new hero now i would show you the uh, current hero i have been using it for a while to test cpus with so that is a complete original hero build so there we go there's the old one in a rig and there's the new one out of a rig. Considering they called it the Dark Hero, there's not a great deal about it that is dark compared to the old one. I mean, the this part and this part had more of a mirrored type of effect, but it was a pretty monochrome, not even monochrome, it was a pretty dark board all along, if I'm completely honest. Anyways, on topic, the Dark Hero or actually let's call it we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a bit of banter now let's call it the darker than before hero anyway up in this top hand corner there is an eight pin and a four pin power cable you only really need to plug the eight pin in unless you're doing some bonkers uh overclocking all of the 5000 series processors including the 5950x will be completely happy with a single cable so maybe consider that as a part of your cable tidying uh, plan stroke game. Now, when we look over in the top corner, you can see uh, CPU, CPU optional, and then an AIO header up in the top corner here for PWM. Then you've got the PCI post reader output here, a four pin RGB, an addressable RGB start and reset buttons fairly simplistic top right hand corner and a fairly generic kind of layout for an Asus board if I'm completely honest. I'm moving the uh, board around so that I can show you without squeaky tripods. These Manfrotto's are actually really nice. Uh, only the regulars are going to understand that. But anyway, you can see that you have some voltage pinout points here for those overclockers of you out there. Then a USB 3.2 Gen 2 case output swiftly followed by another fan header there. And that one, looking at it, they call that chassis fan two. And then a normal USB three header there, eight SATA outputs. And then down in the bottom corner, what I can do is if I go like that, I'm just trying to balance it. So this is the kind of water cooling corner side of things. So you have flow um, headers here, you've got temperature headers so that you can do um, speeds, uh, temperatures for in and out. I'm sure that they're, yeah, they're both temperature. That's your flow sensor, so like your RPM thingy. Then uh, this is also be uh, full speed. This one here on the outside, that's uh, another water pump header. They call it water pump plus. So basically you can plug a four pin water pump header into this. This will natively run at full speed as well, by the way. So if you're an overclocker and you're looking to add a fan onto the top of the board, or uh, for argument's sake, you know, you're adding extra cooling to something, this will always run at 100%. Then you get another um, header here. This is the high amp header. This will also, again, run at 100% unless you set it to otherwise. Um, you can dangle a load of fans off of this, but what, you know, like with um, 
daisy chains or fan out cables. One of the things I will say though, I regularly run uh, three fans off of a single CPU header for an AIO and I've never had any issues, even running 3000 RPM noctuas. So this is good, but it's not necessarily crazy needed for most systems. You can see that you get a couple of USB 2s and then the Asus node here. Another addressable RGB, another four pin RGB, and then when we move along, you can see here that we have the safe boot button and the retry button. I would, one of the first things I would do is set up your safe boot and the retry, it's like a reset, apart from it doesn't make windows do that um, thing where it ends up coming up with uh, um, like errors and do you want to reset your system and all of that sort of thing. Then over in the far corner, you can see the first, wow, that was slick. Uh, you can see the first of the capacitors here and it's a Supreme FX S1220 and it's it basically they've given me a lo load of stuff but it's got an ESS uh, ES9023P in there uh, so it's all for like high-end headphones and stuff like that so th there's a lot going on there with the audio but then the onboard audio with systems has got so much better lately uh, did we miss a fan header? Yeah, we did miss a fan header. So there's a fan header there, look. There's one there. I was looking to see if there was any around here, but there is one just above the top M.2. And I say the top M.2 because there is one here and one here. I'm not sure if there's another one underneath this, and I don't think there is because there's no screws to take this off. This looks like a rather big heat sink. So it looks like it's just going to be here and here. Something that I can say, though, is this is X570. So this giant heat sink is here because there's no fan. So you're not gonna get that background noise in case you've ever been wondered about uh, the fans and stuff like that. Th th there you have it. They've kind of found a way to do away with it. Now, around the VRM area, information I'm literally taking just from their website because I haven't got a reviewer's guide yet and I haven't had my questions answered about the exact way that they've laid out the power. But what it's, excuse me, it says, Robust power delivery, design power solution, 14 plus 2 TI power stages, rated for 90 amps. I'm assuming that's 14 plus 2 and they're all 90 amp power stages. Procool 2 power connectors, microfine alloy chokes and 10K Japanese made black metallic capacitors. So that's all the information I had and I literally printed it off from their website because uh, I can find out the same amount as you at the moment. There's no back plate on the board. By the way, I did have a ganders round there, but this is the uh, rear IO. BIOS flash switch, CMOS clear switch. Now the BIOS flash here links in here with uh, the BIOS kind of header for BIOS flashback. That's actually a really low level BIOS flash as well. And they do have, when you download the BIOS now, a BIOS renamer that comes with it, which makes the BIOS flashback so much easier. You don't have to think about it and it makes life so good. And to be fair, uh, if you can, I would use BIOS flashback all the time. You literally just press and hold the BIOS flashback button, it will start to flash. If it goes solid blue, it's not working. If it starts to flash quicker, then it's working. Um, Wi-Fi 6 on the back, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, normal ethernet, panel, uh, sorry, your audio out here, and these all light up as well. USB type C here, you can see that there's a load of USB 3.1 and 3.1 Gen 2. So there's a lot of connectivity on the back of that. It's actually nice to see a fully stacked out rear IO because it seems like we've been getting pretty skinny ones for a while. But there we have it, boys and girls your Dark Hero preview from me. Now, I am going to leave that with you. Love your comments and thoughts and all of that sort of stuff underneath. I will be back with you with reviews for CPUs and all kinds of other stuff in the not too distant future. We have some cases and stuff coming as well. Anyway, that's more of a subscriber video. So for now, at least, this is the tiniest one out. How many of you shouted at the screen because I hadn't done this? Well, there you go. There is the uh, lighting. It's not, it's just with a, like a hacker's cable sort of thing. 
So this is just on a uh, demo cycle is the best way I can explain it. There's actually not a great deal of RGB going on on the board. You can pick up a little bit on camera that it's going onto the heat sinks, but my camera's making it look a lot brighter than it does in real life. Can't really see it by the naked eye. And there you have the ROG eye there as well. I think it's a bit of a missed trick that the Dark Hero here doesn't light up, but that is where the top M.2 is. So I do get it. I just think it might have looked a little bit more complete. There's no like loads of lighting anywhere else. You can see like there's a bit of backlighting coming around the back of the heat sink, but it's very, very faint. And again, my, C uh, my camera is making it look a lot brighter than it is. Come on then camera, there we go. So it is very faint, you can only really see the eye to the naked eye and then the, the camera's making everything else look a bit more intense. Do you think it needed more or are you happy with the lack of it so that you can turn it off? Do let me know.